Sean was always a little bit of a rebel. He was, he, he was a good kid, though. He had a, a, a very kind heart and a very sensitive heart. He was a, a good person. But when the stealing started, that's when, I mean, that's when we really knew it was really bad. Started out with <clears throat> messing around with the drinking first, of course, pot second. He didn't, believe it or not, didn't he? He um, went from that to um, Percocets, and that was just a party drug. And he went to the um, Oxycontins by prescription, and that's how he became addicted. The abuse of prescription pills is often the result of the use of gateway drugs such as alcohol and marijuana. Started drinking, um, going to parties, and then somebody says, hey, take this. It's a Percocet. And then from there, I moved to Xanax. And then on proms and homecomings, we did ecstasy. It was all for fun. Around my senior year, somebody gave me Oxycontin. They said it was just like a perk. And so I just kept doing that every day. So it just I could just move, get out of bed. It was horrible. Like my legs were killing me, my back. Like I'll throw up if I didn't have it. Just sweat. I couldn't sleep at night. Day one in a day, weeks, weeks, whatever. And I just got hooked. I tried Oxycontin was in probably around sophomore year. And just me and a couple of my friends were all hanging out at someone's house. And just someone brought it and I tried it. People don't realize that there's few hours of being high influences your life beyond the party. More specifically, the side effects of Oxycontin include physical addiction, dependency, obsession, slowness of breath, death, and a drastic personality change. It's a drug when you use it that it totally takes over your personality. When he was using for three years, I would basically say he became a monster. And I know he would agree with that. Um, <clears throat> he had a lot, of, a lot of regrets and a lot of guilt for the way he treated his family. Common thing for uh, people who use drugs, um, they get so depressed that the darkness just fills their life and they can't, they can't seem to escape it. And the only way they seem to find any relief is wanting to die. Sometimes addicts don't realize the regret they will feel looking back on their actions during the addiction. I regret like just what I did to my family, like what I put them through. I regret taking it because it ruined my senior year, my, my family, a lot of relationships. Before I started doing drugs, me and my mom's relationship was real good, we were real close. And then once I started using and she found out, then we started growing apart and arguing a lot. I was um, afraid every day to wake up and find my son, that he was going to be dead in bed. Getting clean is one of the biggest obstacles to overcome as an addict. Medical expenses, loss of work, and psychological stability add to the struggle. I finally went to rehab at the end of senior year, right before graduation. And then my insurance caught me off, so I was only in rehab for five days. I came out the day before graduation. I graduated, I stayed clean for a few weeks, and then I relapsed. Towards the middle, towards the end of the summer, I moved to Rhode Island with my dad to uh, get clean. I stayed there for about two months. I appreciate my mom for helping me not use anymore because if it wasn't for her, I'd probably be out using right now or dead or in jail. I had one semester left to graduate and I went to rehab and I missed the beginning of school. I, mean, I cut all my friends off. I talked to like nobody from Clearview. You gotta surround yourself with like sober people and meet like all new friends. You gotta cut all your old friends off. It became a pattern. I didn't recognize it until now looking back, I see you know, that there was a pattern to the addiction. And I've learned a lot of addicts are that way. They fight hard, but if you get addicted too badly and you're using it too long, it's, there's a whole lot of hope that's not there because the addiction is so strong. With a lot of commitment, rehab can improve your life. However, for the unlucky ones, their future may contain homelessness, jail, or even death. My last words were him, to him were, be good and I love you. I came home at 8.30 and I didn't check on him, which I feel sorry for now. But um, he was probably already gone by 8.30. And um, there was nothing we could do because he was, he was already gone. The consequence of not speaking up could be the death of your friend. The pain I feel inside makes me want to run and hide. 
The chains that are bound so tight make me want to give up this fight called life. This anger deep within has only just begun, but the light is becoming so dim. But there's a life with hope that I can no longer do no dope. A drug that can overpower that has made so many lives so sour. I will no longer be a victim, no longer be a part of this system. I will live, I will be free, I will be free to be me.